Hello and welcome to this film which is all about corrosion and in fact it's all about the corrosion of iron or what a lot of people know as rusting. Okay, and it's certainly a reaction that we often try to prevent. But we'll look at that prevention in the next film. Hopefully by the end of this film um, you'll be able to look up some half equations on your data sheet that will allow you to explain what's going on when rusting takes place and you'll have some understanding of why we might think that rust would just be iron hydroxide, but, it's, but it ends up not being iron hydroxide. Okay, so let's have a look at what happens when iron rusts. Here's a diagram showing what's taking place. This big white blob that you can see here, this is um, supposed to be a droplet of water sitting on the surface of this grey iron here. Okay, and we've got two half equations taking place in this reaction between all these things. One is a reduction and one is an oxidation. Okay, And the reduction actually involves oxygen reacting with water, uh, two waters even, and four electrons to produce four OH minus ions. And if you don't need to remember that half equation because it's on your data sheet. It can be found at um, minus, sorry, at plus 0 0.40 volts. Okay, so you don't need to remember that there, it's, it's on your data sheet. What oxidation reaction is taking place? Well, iron is being oxidized, so the only half equation I've got on my data sheet with just iron in it, so that is to say not iron ions, but actual iron in it, What's that minus doing up there? I don't know. But anyway, there's our oxidation half equation. Okay. Now, I've written them this way around. This one's actually at minus 0.44 volts. I've written them this way around because this is the way they are on the data sheet. And we can see that this oxygen and water turning into hydroxide ions and these iron atoms turning into iron ions. Because this is a clockwise loop, this must be a feasible reaction. So it's feasible for iron to react with oxygen and water. And in fact, what we do when this happens is we basically set up an electrochemical cell. Okay? So let's see if we can see what features of the electrochemical cell we can find here. Okay? Here's where the oxidation is taking place. This is where the iron is pitting. Okay? It's not happening where the oxygen and water and electrons are coming into contact because the two electrodes are separated by the fact that they're oppositely charged. Okay, so here's our anode. This is where the iron is corroding. It's not at the edge of the droplet, but actually inside. Okay, and the electrons that are being given up by the iron are flowing through the wire, which is actually the iron here, because iron's a conductor. Okay, so the electrons flow round to the cathode. Here's our cathode, right? So here's our cathode. The cathode action reduces oxygen. It takes oxygen, it adds electrons, and it turns it into hydroxide ions. Now, we've made iron ions here and hydroxide ions there. They can diffuse through the water droplets. So the water droplets acting like our salt bridge. Okay? And these, this diffusion of these ions allows the completion of this circuit. So we've got negative charge flowing clockwise on this diagram here and anti-clockwise on this diagram here. Okay, so we've got a complete circuit. When these two ions meet, they're actually going to form a precipitate because iron 2 hydroxide is insoluble. So if we just quickly write an overall equation for this, we've got two electrons here. So let's double this equation so that we've got four. We've got two ions plus O2 plus 2H2O forming... 2Fe2 plus ions and 4OH minus ions, but they're forming an insoluble precipitate. So 2Fe OH twice. Okay? So we've got all the features of an electrochemical cell there. We've got reduction and oxidation. We've got a cathode and an anode. We've got a wire in our external circuit. We've got a salt bridge carrying ions around. Okay? And these are the products of this redox reaction. But what we're told is that iron 2 hydroxide, like a lot of iron 2 ions, is quite unstable and easily oxidized by oxygen from the air, that will turn into iron 3 hydroxide. And that's a brown solid. 
which a lot of people think of as Rust. Okay, now just quickly to finish with, we're going to look at why it is that if we're making these substances, why Rust isn't just one of those two. Okay, and this isn't really tested or examined very much, but it's just worth bearing in mind that um, what can happen is if we've got iron hydroxide, that by the time your piece of iron dries out, so that is by the time you've lost some water from it, you can actually turn your iron 3 hydroxide into iron oxide, right? And if it's hydrated, that is, there's water of crystallization in it, then you've got rust on the surface of your iron. So most commonly people think of rust as being hydrated oxides of iron rather than being iron 3 hydroxide, although I suppose it's a fairly common, commonly held idea that rust is just iron 3 hydroxide. Okay, so quite a short film there, but some really important principles about what corrosion is. The next film deals with corrosion prevention, so ways we can stop iron from rusting. Please, if you've got any questions or if you want to clear up any areas of misunderstanding, come and ask me as soon as you can or post a comment on YouTube so that other people can get the benefit of your question. Thanks very much.